I'm always drawn to the, the people in history who aren't who you learn about in history class, and their contributions are usually just lost. Hey, I'm Sean Lynch, and this is the story of the Harlem Hellfighters. So we're here at 142nd Street and 5th Avenue in the Harlem River Drive. Behind me is the armory of the 369th Infantry Regiment, the most decorated American unit in all of World War I. And that was an all-black unit, mostly from Harlem, that received their commendation despite fighting for a country that treated them as second-class citizens and an army that treated them as lesser soldiers. When World War I starts in 1917, the community in Harlem is sort of divided about whether to even fight for the war. You've got a country that's in the midst of Jim Crow, where lynchings happen every day, where people's rights are being destroyed, and a president, Woodrow Wilson, who's one of the most racist presidents we've ever had. The army was segregated. They had 13% black troops, and yet, the troops that they did have, they assigned to duty unloading ships, digging trenches and digging latrines. When the Hellfighters, as they were called, arrived to Europe, they found that they were sent and dispatched to the French army. They wouldn't even let them serve under American command. They essentially acted as French troops. In fact, the French commanders treated them better than the American commanders ever treated them. They treated them as equal members of the army and put them right in the center of the line. During one of the battles, two of the soldiers from the Hellfighters were at a listening post. While they heard a platoon of 30 Germans coming across no man's land, they started opening fire. The Germans shot back. They injured Private Needham Roberts and Private Henry Johnson. Roberts was throwing grenades from lying on the ground. They came upon the two of them, so he hit him with the butt end of his gun. Four Germans were killed, and the other 30 of the platoon ran back across no man's land. Their exploits were touted in American newspapers and French newspapers as well. And that's not all the Hellfighters accomplished. Like any good army unit, they had a regimental band. And like any good band from Harlem, they were led by one of the best band leaders in America, a guy named James Reese Europe. He was actually the first band leader to play ragtime and proto-jazz at Carnegie Hall in 1912. He led the band of one of the most popular ballroom dance teams, a white couple named Vernon and Irene Castle. They invented the Foxtrot. And they brought black music, they brought jazz and ragtime to Europe for the first time. This was the first time any of these people had heard this kind of black American music. When they all came back to America in February of 1919, they were paraded up Fifth Avenue with a hero's welcome. It's a story of black Americans in the 19-teens. It's bound not to end well. They went to Europe to try and fight for their own rights back home. But in the end, the summer of 1919 was one of the worst race riots in American history as 40 cities throughout the country saw race riots. It's a tragic end for so many of these figures, but one that we can correct by remembering them and by remembering the incredible deeds they did and the music they brought to the rest of the world and the sacrifice that they gave for a country that didn't appreciate them. And it's the kind of story that gets lost in history. And that's why we can look at this armory today and remember it.